Hello, my front porch friend. Well, as you can see, I'm a long way from the valley today. This week, I'm in Manchester, England. But I have a word. In fact, two, two things that I have to share with you that matters to you in life-changing ways. The first thing is I just want to talk to you and remind you again about the unique ways that God speaks to us. And the second thing is about the mission he has called you and me to as intercessors. You know, one of the things I love to share with you the most is the words and the, that God has given me in the unique ways that they have come. I love that because, you know, in, in Jeremiah 33, 3, one of my favorite verses, it says, it's kind of like God's 911, you call on me and I will answer you. In other words, he will speak. You should expect to hear from God when you call on God. Two things there. Number one, it's important to call on him. Don't just assume he's going to come and do something. No, remember John Wesley, God does nothing in the earth except in response to prayer. That's what John Wesley said, and it's true. God responds to prayer. God responds when we call out to him. He says, when you call on me, I will answer you when you call. Now, the next thing is expect an answer. And the thing I love about him so much is the unique way he speaks. He speaks your language and sometimes in amazing ways. That's why I, I love to tell you my stories of, of how God spoke to me one time. Remember through the feather. He spoke to me through the crown. He spoke. I, I share all those stories. One of, you know, you know, you and I have talked about a, a lot because it, I wanted to encourage your faith. That if God will speak to me in these unique ways, he has no respect of person. He knows your language too. And he will speak to you. Once you ask him, start looking for his answer. Just start looking and listening, looking and listening. You will hear him. One of the most profound, impacting ways God has ever spoken to me in my life was this journey to Manchester, England. Now, I know you're like, well, you know, that doesn't relate to me. Don't turn this off. It does relate to you. And, and I believe that's why you are watching this right now is because God's heart for the harvest, God's call for laborers speaks to you and to me. And it's so interesting because, you know, I've told you the story. In fact, when I was at women's conference, just a couple of weeks ago when we were at the Front Porch Friends Conference, I shared with y'all part of my journey on Friday night when I spoke about the, the word that I received to come to Manchester. I shared with you my story of how God called me to work with young people. I never dreamed in my life I would ever work with young people. Why should I? I'm an, I was an old woman, almost 40. I mean, not that that's old, but you know, <laughs> not ex I'm not exactly a youth pastor type, okay? Here God calls for me to work with the youth of my community, not knowing at that time it was the highest calling and honor he'd ever given me, but it's not just to me, it's to you. As a spiritual mother or father, which is what this generation so desperately needs, please keep listening. Don't write this off. It matters to you and to your miracle that you're praying for. Because in the beginning days when God called me to work with young people and I was giving him all my excuses about why I shouldn't do that, he said what he knew would hook my heart. But Karen, what you invest in the lives of other young people, you'll reap in your children. Because that's what the word says in Galatians. What you sow is what you reap. I believe that's across the board. A lot of people think of it as only finances. Well, that's part of it, but it's much more than that. What you sow in them in love, you will reap. What you sow in them in time, you will reap. What you sow, in, all that you sow, is going to reap. Now, where do we want it reaped the most, you and me? I already know before you answer me, in our children. So what you sow in the lives of maybe even young people you don't know, God was telling me, you're going to reap it in your two girls. At that time, Lindsay was 12 and Lauren was 15. And boy, did I ever need that promise fulfilled years later when my daughter walked away from God. But I can sit here today and tell you, he kept his word to me because I had given him a yes when he asked me to do that in 1998. So today, why am I sharing this with you? Why does it matter to you and your prodigal? 
Well, this journey brought about one of the most truly supernatural encounters with God I have ever had in my life was after I began to work with the youth of Hamilton. Then God whispers and opens the door and he said, Karen, I know I told you it was your community, but your community is actually the world. And he opens the door to a global call that involves you too. And I want to share with you this story because I'm sitting here today in Manchester, remembering the way God called me here. And now I'm understanding it wasn't just me because now God has brought you in my life as a front porch friend. I've been believing with you for your prodigal and your answered prayer of healing and impossible situations. That's why you and I meet on this porch every week is because we encourage each other, don't we? All right. Well, I believe the next phase of where we're going, because I believe you're this close to your miracle. I believe it is tied to embracing the heart of God in his heart for harvest and souls. That it's not only about your prodigal only, it's about your prodigal plus one and two and three that God's going to give us in this great harvest of souls that we're going to be a part of praying in. All right. So I want you to watch this. I'm about to go to downtown Manchester right now. I'm going to go down right on the streets of where I heard the call the first time. And I'm going to share with you just a little bit of the journey. And at the end of this, I've got to show you something that we found today. Oh, my heavens. A door that opened. And again, this is not just my story. You are in it too. You're going to be right dab in the middle of it all. So I don't, want to, I don't want to share this without you being here with me. So come with me right now. We're going to downtown Manchester together, and I'm going to pick up my story that I'm about to tell you right there in the streets. Comment, comment, comment all the way through this, and let me know what you're thinking, okay? I'll meet you in downtown. I'll see you in a second. Hang on. Come on for the ride. So here I am in a spot and in a city that means so much to me. It's just like being in the middle of just a God moment. I'm, of course, in Manchester, England, downtown. I am literally on the campus of the University of Manchester here, which, of course, really in, includes all, just about everything as far as you can see, dorms and, and, and just all of these buildings. It's a massive, massive university, of course, a very large city. But I just can't help but just remember as I'm walking these streets, the supernatural way that God revealed to me his heart for Europe and his plan for this city and this region. And of course, if you were with me at the Front Porch Friends Conference a few days ago, I shared with you a lot of that journey. And But even just for those of you that weren't there and for the fact that I'm standing right now on the sidewalk of where I was in 2004 and 2014, let me just recap it for you quickly. Stay with me, please, in thought and mind. So, you know, in 2004, I came here to sing for a conference. And, and I was singing in this large healing crusade with Benny Hinn. I was ministering. We had just finished the crusade. I was in downtown Manchester right here in some high-rise hotel. I'm not even sure exactly where the hotel was, but it was somewhere in downtown Manchester. It was probably, I don't know, it was in the morning hours. It was late, midnight-ish, even afterwards. And I was in my hotel room looking down on the streets of Manchester. And, and I was alone. There was no one with me. But for some reason, of course, Lindsay's here with me right now, my beautiful angel answered a prayer and um, but I was on the, in this hotel looking down on the streets of Manchester when you know I see this throng of young people I mean it's hundreds if not thousands of young people in the streets of Manchester walking in and out of the pubs and it's a long story I won't go into all the details but my heart was so gripped by the condition of the youth of this region that I was looking at and, and my heart had already turned to the youth the call that God had given me to reach young men and women. I just came down the streets of the city. I began to walk among these young people and just begin to talk to them. And so, it, it, again, it was late at night. I'm alone, but my Southern accent worked for my good that day. And I just began to talk to these kids and it kind of drew them around me. And they were like, you know, what are you doing here? Where are you from? And I was telling them, you know, I'm from America and blah, blah, blah. And so then of course they were like, well, what are you doing in Manchester? So I said, well, I'm here to sing. So then they were like, you know, whoa, sing, you sing, you sing, sing for us. So I started singing, took advantage of the audience God had given me. 
So I just started singing to the kids that were standing around me on these very sidewalks. And I began to sing that night to them. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more can he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. And I looked up and those kids had tears in their eyes. And the spirit of the Lord moved in that moment, drops down in a little crowd of young people in the middle of Manchester. And when I left this city that day, I knew someday there'll be a ramp in Manchester, England. Of course, that's the place we have in Alabama, our ministry center that ministers to young people from all over the nation and now nations. Well, now stay with me, stay with me. So then God begins to send young people to the ramp from Europe, especially from England and even Manchester, sends them to Alabama, to Hamilton, Alabama, from England, just because they heard of us on the internet and they came. Well, in 2014, as I've told you before, we get the supernatural word from God. I don't have time to tell you the details right now. You can go online and listen to that message that I preached on Friday night at the conference and you can hear more of the details. But I get this word from God in no doubt about it, that he was sending us, that it was time to move on the Manchester word. It was 10 years later now, first encounter on the street was 2004. Now it's 2014. And the crazy thing was Lindsay, had just left. I mean, it was it was a strange time. So the battle had had begun with my daughter, but the word from God has come to be fulfilled. So I get this word. We're supposed to go. We're supposed to go right now. So I met with these young men that are on my staff. My son-in-law Samuel, another young man named Joe Racer. I said, guys, we have to go to Manchester and just scout out the land. God is calling us to go. We're gonna go. So this is so amazing. So I looked at Joe, I was looking in the office. I said, Joe, book the tickets right now. Go book the tickets, we need to leave in two weeks. So I went to a building in downtown Hamilton. I'm not gonna go into all the details. I was cleaning out a building no one goes in to get it ready to build dorms for our ministry students. I am cleaning it out. There's, there's boxes everywhere. No one goes in this building, no one. Okay, it's been closed for years and years and years and years. I'm even wearing a mask only because of the dust from being in that old room. So I picked up this box, and when I picked up the box, lying on the ground was a little piece of white paper neatly folded. I opened the paper to see what it was, whether I should throw it away or what I should do with it. I looked down at these words, these printed words with no signature, no date, and here's what the words said. When you arrive to the place in Europe, you will meet a man who will help you plant, not one ramp, but two ramps, two locations, two places that will that will harvest double the size of an army of the young <clears throat> that will come with a loud shout that will cause the enemy to flee from that land and others when you arrive to the place in europe i will send you with double the finances and double the vision as i set my army up that will change that region for good and then he said this i will give you double for the trouble that has come to your house. And then he says, demand the people to pray double and to give double. I will make this dream come to pass. <laughs> well, he has kept this part of the promise. He has given me double for the trouble that came to my house and he's still doing that. Thank you, Jesus. But more than that, even, even more than that is the heart of God for the souls of this nation all over Europe. And here I'm standing right now in this, the middle of this place that is filled with a harvest field that is ready to harvest and the presence of God that is right here among us. So right here and right now, I'm standing on this sidewalk that in 2014, I was standing here. I was standing here. Now, hang on just a second. What is that? I don't know. I guess it's a... Uh... It's a strange sound coming toward me but it doesn't matter. I want you to listen. Hang on. Yeah. There's somebody passing me. Yeah. Just listen. Mm -hmm. 
So see, we're in a place of great darkness, but a great light has come, I'm telling you. So, it doesn't matter what the enemy does, God is greater and he has come to this city. Yes. So in 2014, I, when we were here to scout the land, ladies, listen, I was on this very sidewalk right down here, right down this sidewalk, right down here on the university. I was walking with my team that was with me on that, in that trip. And I was just walking along. We were prayer walking right here on this sidewalk. And as we were walking on this sidewalk, just like we're doing right here, right now. And I was just walking down here, just praying, Lord, where do you want us to be? God, what do you want us to do in this city? God, where's the building you want us to go into? Lord, how are we going to harvest the youth of this region? How are we going to harvest the youth of this university? How are we going to see them encounter God? Lord, show us this building. Show us where you want us to be. While I'm saying that, I whirled around to my team just like this right here. And I looked at the team that were walking behind me and they were praying too. And I said, guys, I said, I just keep remembering that game that we used to play when we were kids. I said, I just feel like I hear this. You're getting warmer. You're getting warmer. But I just believe God's about to say to us, you're hot. You're hot. This is it. A few days later of the same week, we had gone up into Scotland, which of course is not very far from here. And we were standing with a group of ministers that are from that area, small group in a small room. And we were standing encircled. We were in a circle holding hands, praying. Now, while we were doing that, one of the ministers out of nowhere, who was not with us that day, who didn't know a thing about what I've just told you about being on the sidewalk saying that, he was in Scotland. Out of nowhere, that man goes, I just keep hearing the words from that game children used to play. You're getting warmer, you're getting warmer, but the Lord says that you're hot. You're getting hot. What in the world? Honey, I just about passed out. I knew God was speaking to us and telling us, this is it. You're getting closer to my will. You're getting closer to my will. You're getting so close that you're hot. You're getting hot. This is it. This is what I'm wanting to do. Well, this is so crazy. Listen to me. Listen to me. So this week, it's seven and a half years later since that word in 2014. And since the word on the floor, and since the word that God gave us when we came to scout the land of you're getting warmer, you're getting warmer. So here I am in Manchester right now in the middle of that place, in the middle of the, in the, in, on the grounds of the university today. Now we, we started a work here in 2016. Joe and Stacy, the one I went work with, they've started a work. We have a church here in Manchester where we've just been building a core team of people as laborers to help us harvest the youth of this region. Now, there's a young man. See him skateboarding? So, y'all, after all these years of trying to get a building in Manchester to hold our services for the youth, to harvest the youth, because my heart was for the youth of this university. My heart was for the youth of this region. That's who I knew I was assigned to in 2004. This is the streets I met him on, okay? And we've tried for years to find a room that we could reach the youth of this, this university in this region. So the church is at buildings over another place in Manchester. This is for the youth outreach. Honey, today, we have just had this building to open that we're going to be able to use on a weekly basis. It is on and within the university campus. This is a miracle. Guess where it is? It's down the sidewalk from the very place. I walked right here, skipping backwards seven and a half years ago, saying, you're getting warmer, you're getting warmer. I said, I just keep hearing that. I hear the Lord just saying, you're getting warmer, you're getting, I said, I said, I just feel like he's fixing to say, you're hot, you're hot. Seven and a half years ago, I said that. This week, I come to this city. We've just had the room to open for the first time ever. Guess where it is? Down there was the warmer, warmer word. I turned the corner seven and a half, seven and a half years later. Here's the building we will start in at the end of this summer. Actually, in May is the first service. And then after that, look at this. Look at this. Here's our building. 
We're going to hold our youth services in. Look at this. Can you believe it? It's around the corner from the Word. Look, St. Peter's House. It's inside that building. Inside that building. Look at the name of the cafe that's attached to it. Milk and Honey. The Land of Promise. The cafe that's inside this building. It's called Milk and Honey. If that's not a sign from God, look at this. Look up here on the sign. All will be well. All will be well. Come on, look at the name of the building. On top through the front doors. This is the front doors. And look what it says. The way in. Honey. What about God? What about God? Who answers prayer? You are in this with me. As praying mothers. As praying grandmothers. We're going to take up the heart of God. We're going to take up the heart of God. Not only for our children. But the prodigals that we're believing for. And that you're believing for. I brought my prodigal here. Lindsay came with me in 2014. I had her to come. I talked her into coming seven and a half years ago. I had Lindsay come with me on that trip. And she was away from God. It was a nightmare for her. But I felt like she was supposed to have been on that trip. She's not been back since until this week. Seven and a half years later, my daughter is with me, standing right over there with my little team. Whole, cleansed, restored, and set free. Why? God keeps his promises. Not only is my prodigal back and God kept his promise to give me double. Honey, that's your word. Let you need to look at this word and say what God did for her, he's doing for me. I'm telling you, my sweet friend, the promise God gave me that what you invest in the lives of other young people, you'll reap it in your children. I'm the mother, I'm the sister, I'm the friend to you right now to tell you God's promises are for you. What you sow is what you reap. And you and I have been called by God, and I believe this, to be spiritual mothers as well as natural mothers. Yes, we're praying for prodigals to come home. Yes, God answers prayer, and I've got proof that he does. But also, through these doors are going to pass hundreds and thousands of prodigals. Some of them have no mothers to pray for them, and you and I are going to be that. The young people that's going to pass through these doors, sometimes mothers have prayed for them and prayed for them. And we're going to be a part of the answer to prayer for some other mothers. Come on, I believe that. We are in this together. We're not only going to believe God for ours, we're going to believe God for the prodigals he has around these cities and around the world. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. This is the sweet vengeance you and I get on the enemy. That not only are we going to pray till our kids get home. No, the sweet vengeance is we're going to keep going. It's going to be mine plus one. It's going to be mine plus one. And plus one means plus one. And plus one means multiply. Until we can say like Deuteronomy 111. And may the Lord, the God of your ancestors, multiply you a thousand times greater and bless you as he promised so it's going to be your prodigal home plus one two three until it's a thousand times greater till the devil wishes he had never touched your child that's what this is going to be and we're going to be a part of it your prophetic word is all will be well our prophetic word for what God is going to do in this city is get ready. It's harvest time. Oh, my sweet friend, Lord, I stand here with my friend, my front porch friend today. I'm standing with my front porch friend in downtown Manchester, the place of promise. Yes, Lord, a land of milk and honey, a place of promise fulfilled. And Lord, I believe she's my front porch friend for a reason. And Lord, I believe this is part of that reason, that we're going to join together, not only for our children, but the children of your heart that has no spiritual mothers praying for them. And Lord, we stand here in agreement in the name of Jesus, and we hear your alarms being sounded that now is the time to reach this generation. Lord, we say yes, we hear the alarm of the Spirit, that it's time and it is urgent. And Lord, what you're calling us to do, we're gonna do it now. God, don't only bring our prodigals home, yes, bring them home, but also not just them, but Lord, mine plus one, mine plus two, mine plus a thousand, 
thousand, mine plus more till Jesus comes. Bring them home, God. We stand as spiritual mothers and fathers in firm agreement to build a wall around this generation of prayer and declare and claim they will be claimed for the kingdom of God. And you will raise up out of Manchester an army of the young that will come with a loud shout in Jesus' name. Oh, my sweet friend, <laughs> it's a day of miracles. It's a day for your miracle. And you know what? It's a day for ours, for his glory. I want to decree one last thing over you that I hear today. And it's not only the word God gave me that what you invest in the loves of the young people, you'll reap in your children. It's also this promise God gave me. And I want you to hear this in the spirit in Jesus' name. That the Lord said, I will give you double for the trouble that has come to your house. He gave me that promise in the word concerning Manchester when my prodigal was away. As you have joined his mission in his heart for the harvest of souls globally, I believe his promise to you as it was to me. I will give you double for the trouble that has come to your house. It's time to, for you to start claiming double. I get double. Double is mine. Double the joy double the peace, double the restoration, and double the love in my home. You can do that. That's your word too. It's our day of miracles. It's our day of harvest. I love you, my friend. I will talk to you very, very soon with a great report in Jesus' name. Until then, bye-bye.